I'm Mark Evanstein with music.py, and in these videos, I'm going to be showing you how to connect Python to Ableton. Okay, so in the last video, we created this baseline. And in this video, we're gonna create a drum beat to go with it. So now as a reminder, we can play the drums from Python by simply creating a new MIDI part using the SCAMP library and sending the output to IAC bus one, which is that cable that connects Python to Ableton. Remember that the MIDI pitch of a drum part is gonna to correspond to the instrument that gets played. So if we loop through these different MIDI pitches and ask the drums to play a note at that pitch with full volume and a duration of one beat, this is what it sounds like. And you can see it going through the drum parts here in Ableton. Okay, but what should this drum part be based on? Well, I thought it'd be fun to highlight the value of using Python by making drum beats based on cellular automata. So this is a basic script that creates cellular automata. We're using something called cellpylib, which is a freely available Python library for working with cellular automata. And I'll go ahead and run this script to show you what we're working with. The idea of cellular automata is that you're working with a bunch of cells, in this case, a one-dimensional array of cells that are either alive or dead. And over time, these cells evolve according to different rules. So each row of this graph is a new time step. And if we look at a particular cell, here it's alive, alive, dead, alive, alive, alive. And the idea is that there's rules that prescribe what should happen to cells in the next generation based on its current state and its neighborhood. So for instance, this cell right here is alive, but its neighbors are dead. That means that in the next generation, it's gonna be alive. On the other hand, this cell below is alive and its neighbors are also alive. In that case, with this rule, in the next generation, it's dead. You don't have to understand everything about this, just know that cellular automata gives us this kind of organically evolving pattern based on an initial state and a set of rules. And for those of you who do know about cellular automata, this is using the famous rule 30 from Wolfram's categorization of the 256 basic one-dimensional cellular automata with a radius of one. I've put up here a link to it. Let's just check it out. These are the different rules and how they behave over time. Notice if we go to rule 30, it's got this fascinating chaotic behavior. Whereas other rules like rule 26 create kind of fractal patterns and other rules like rule 24 create just very simple patterns. Now you may be wondering, how does this relate to drum parts? But if you look, there are 16 cells here, which is a perfect number for a step sequencer. By the way, if you're intrigued by this combination of Python and music, consider taking my course on cadenze.com. It's a totally beginner-friendly way of learning Python while making music in the process. So over here, I've created a snare drum part based on this idea. So we initiate the snare part to these values with one being alive and zero being dead. And if you look at where they are, this is on beat two and beat four, natural places for a snare to hit. And then we're gonna loop this forever this part here steps through the step sequencer, and if the cell is on, it plays a note, otherwise it rests. And then after we play through the step sequencer, we evolve the cells to the next generation. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like. To me, you can feel the evolution from generation to generation. Okay, but let's do more than just snare. Over here, I've got an array for kick, an array for snare, and an array for hi-hat. I've mostly put the kick on beats one and three, and the snare on beats two and four. And then down here, I'm stepping through all three of them simultaneously. So I'm zipping together the values from each of the different arrays. And if the kick is on, we play a kick. If the snare is on, we play a snare. If the hi-hat is on, we play a hi-hat. And by the way, this right here is gonna play a closed hi-hat with probability 80% and an open hi-hat otherwise. The reason it says blocking equals false here is so that the different hits of the drums can overlap if they're both on for a given cell. And then after we play through a given generation of the step sequencers, we evolve all of them. 
To make things interesting, I used different rules here. I used rule 30 actually for the kick drum, rule 146 for the snare, and rule 135 for the hi-hat, just based on experimentation. The one little wrinkle is that rule 146 for the snare, I really like the way it sounded, but occasionally it would evolve to a point where all the cells are dead and then nothing can happen from there. So this is a little check to see, are all the cells dead? If so, reinitialize it. Let's take a listen to this. To me, this was just such a cool organic beat. And you can see how you could have so many different variations depending on what rules you choose and what starting states you use for the different instruments. So a powerful technique for generative music that's so easy to do in Python and map to Ableton. Okay, but there's one other thing that I wanted to do with this drum part, which is I wanted to filter it. So down here, I've got an EQ attached to the drum kit. And I'm gonna set one of the parts of this EQ to be a resonant low pass filter. And my idea is I want this to sweep up and down as the drum kit plays, just to provide some added variation. So in order to do that, we need to move this knob from inside Python. And the way to do that in Ableton is to click this MIDI button, select the knob, and now it's waiting for a MIDI message from Python that it can learn to react to. By the way, one thing you wanna make sure of going into live preferences and clicking on MIDI is that these IAC drivers should be enabled both for track and for remote. It's the remote column here that lets the knobs be affected by MIDI CC messages. Okay, so we'll go back to Python. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just say drums dot send MIDI CC. I'm gonna give it CC number 16 I don't know why, it just feels natural to me. And it doesn't matter what value I use here. Again, just like with volume, the CC numbers we send are gonna be used from zero to one and they get mapped to a range from zero to 127 in the actual MIDI messages. Then I'm gonna type exit here so that the script ends without sending any other confusing MIDI messages. And I'll just run this. And there we go. Let's check in Ableton. Check it out, see this one slash 16? That means that this is listening to MIDI messages coming from channel one on CC number 16. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and tailor this a little bit so that the lowest it goes down to is about 24 Hertz and the highest it goes up to is maybe about nine or 10 kilohertz. Okay, back to Python. We're gonna pull out this new version of the script and this is exactly the same as the previous one except that it's got this right here, a function called wiggle drum filter. And the idea is this is gonna do exactly what we're hoping to do with that drum filter frequency. We're gonna keep track of what time we're on. And at any given time, we're gonna send a CC message. Oh, better make this 16. So on CC number 16, and we're gonna use a sine wave based on the current time. So it's gonna go up and down, and then we're gonna increment the time. And then to make this run in parallel with the drum part, we have to fork it. And that's what this is right here. Those of you familiar with my scamp libraries might be uh, surprised to see it say fork unsynchronized instead of fork. The difference is that fork really tries to keep everything in perfect lockstep. It's more than just parallel threads because it keeps those threads together under a shared sense of time. Unfortunately, with really small time steps, that can tend to make things lag a little bit, especially if I'm doing a screen recording at the same time. So fork unsynchronized is just a lighter weight fork that doesn't keep things as perfectly synchronized. Oh, and one other thing we gotta do, we gotta turn off the MIDI mapping. Now Ableton's ready to listen. Let's take a listen to it. Watch this filter moving. Now, of course, you could do something like this already with an Ableton by mapping an LFO or something like that. But if you were trying to do something more complicated, being able to control it programmatically from Python could be really valuable. And anyway, with these CC mappings, you can control any knob you want that's MIDI mappable. And you can see there's a lot of them. So the potentials for sound design are enormous. And again, that's what's so cool about this combination of Python and Ableton. From Python using my scamp libraries, you have tremendous algorithmic control over which sounds happen when. But then in Ableton, you can really shape the sound design.
By the way, let's take a listen to this, just the bass and drum parts together now and see how they fit together. Of course, this is just a demo, but I was really pretty happy with how this sounded, the way that the different meters are kind of phasing against one another. So I'm excited for the next episode where we add the theremin part. By the way, you can find all the code for this video series in the description, and you can get early access to the whole series, as well as other fun stuff, at my Patreon. Although, of course, the real reason to subscribe to my Patreon is to support the years of work I've put into Scamp. But hey, bonus stuff is nice too.